I've been a software engineer for a longer period of time than I've been a minimalist. But over time, and especially lately, I've realized just how big an impact this lifestyle practice has had both in my skills and my career development as a software engineer. The connection wasn't super clear at first, but after giving it some thought, I quickly identified the overlapping patterns and how they shifted my mindset when it came down to write some code. Minimalism has gained popularity in the last decade for its statement against mindless consumerism. In 2017, interest in minimalism through YouTube search was around six times greater than its equivalent just three years earlier. I'm actually someone that discovered minimalism around that time, and since then, I began integrating it into my own life. If you're familiar with the principles of minimalism, you probably know that there's really nothing specific about software engineering in there. It's mostly about lifestyle choices and living intentionally. But then the other day, I was thinking about the best way to write the piece of code that would bring the feature I was working on to life. As I did that, I soon came to realize that many of the patterns of thought that I was using to decide how to write that code were patterns that I had been using lately around my lifestyle in the real physical world. And surprisingly enough, they were patterns that I internalized because of minimalism. The value in all of this is no industry breakthrough by any means. The patterns that I'm about to share with you are mostly well-established coding patterns that people are hopefully familiar with, at least in theory. And that last part right there is the key element in my experience, because a lot of junior developers tend to forget about them, and I'm most certainly including myself here when I was starting out. In your early stages as a coder, it is very easy to overlook these things if your code works at the time you run it. And that's kind of where the breakthrough was for me. To find out that the mental pathways that I'd been reinforcing because of minimalism overlapped quite a bit with these clean coding practices. So adopting them was not only helping me live a more intentional lifestyle, but it was also making it a lot easier for me to level up my coding skills. Let's take a look at some of these now. Separation of concerns. This principle simply states that you shouldn't write your code in these large chunks that contain unrelated behavior. If you're at all familiar with Marie Kondo, besides the famous question of whether or not an object sparks joy, she advocates for tidying up based on category rather than location. So when I started learning more about her method, I really got into the habit of thinking about the key purpose of every object I decided to keep and where I decided to keep it. And it's especially satisfying that that last sentence works for both objects in your physical world and your code. So the next time you find yourself needing to add a bit of functionality to your product, take a moment and think about the key purpose of that code you're about to add and where does it really belong to. Making every line of code count. Having unlimited space to write code within a file has made some programmers lazy. And again, I'm including myself here. That's because there's no obvious negative immediate consequence of leaving a bit of redundant code in that file. At worst, the file's gonna end up taking a couple more kilobytes. One of the key principles of minimalism is intentionality. I'd argue it's the most important one, at least in my experience. Intentionality when writing code can mean many things, but one way I like to phrase it is making every line of code count. That doesn't necessarily mean that I am now optimizing for shorter lines of code or shorter code files. It means that I am optimizing for conciseness and testability and readability, and I avoid leaving redundant code uh, in the file or unnecessary comments. Leveraging the language features. One of the consequences of the adoption of minimalism in my life is the fact that the objects that I choose to keep should be of relative high quality and ideally generic enough to be used in more than a single context. Some examples of this are the set of pots and pans that I keep, a sleeper sofa, a standing desk or a desk shelf that allows me to easily shift between mouse and keyboard and pen and paper. These objects were ideated and manufactured by other people, companies with an established manufacturing process and quality assurance measures. And my choice, as a minimalist, is to trust enough these companies and measures to keep those objects in my home to simplify my lifestyle. And it's actually not a very different story in code. When you're working on a feature, you generally type code into a file to bring some sort of behavior into existence. And you have a choice about what set of tools and what tokens you want to leave in that file to achieve that behavior. One of the most rewarding investments I've made in my own career as a software engineer is taking the time to research the API available to me by either the language or the platform that I'm working on. More often than not, a couple of minutes of research leads me to a new type or interface or method that greatly simplifies uh, what I'm trying to accomplish. And there aren't a ton of reasons not to trust these APIs. 
If you have them available to you when you're coding, it is very likely that they underwent a significant quality assurance process. And it's also probably a more optimized solution than one you would generally come up with on the spot while you're working on a feature with your own set of requirements, doing only what is essential. While this term essentialism was quite popularized by Greg McEwen uh, as a life practice in his book titled as such, uh, there's really no reason for it to be excluded in software engineering. I believe some of the most impactful contributions I've made to the product I work on and my team have been around posing the question of whether or not we should really be doing a given piece of work. It's very easy to grab work items and execute on them in order to feel productive, but it takes a deliberate effort to stop and really ask ourselves what is the work that best aligns with our goals and the product vision. From Greg's own words, essentialism is not about how to get more things done. It's about how to get the right things done. It doesn't mean just doing less for the sake of less either. It is about making the wisest possible investment of your time and energy in order to operate at our highest point of contribution by doing only what is essential. Minimalism doesn't have to be for everyone. I'm certainly not advocating that you should become one in order to succeed as a software engineer. In fact, most of the software engineers I know are not minimalists. But I'm also pretty sure that everyone can benefit, at least in some measure, from its principles. If you're a software engineer and you happen to also be starting out with minimalism, you can use these principles to your advantage and start treating your code the way you're learning to treat your physical environment. And that's all I had for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving it a like below and subscribing for more content like this. As you can see, I'm just getting started with my channel, so it would help me a lot to navigate the algorithm. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.